This LOS is define prepayment risk and describe the prepayment risk of mortgage-backed securities. Residential mortgage-backed securities, prepayment risk. An investor who owns mortgage pass-through securities does not know what the future cash flows will be because these future cash flows depend on actual prepayments. Prepayment risk includes two components, contraction risk and extension risk. Contraction risk is the risk that when interest rates decline, the security will have a shorter maturity than was anticipated at the time of purchase because homeowners will refinance at new lower interest rates. Extension risk is the risk that when interest rates rise, fewer prepayments will occur than what was anticipated at the time of the purchase because homeowners are reluctant to give up the benefits of a contractual interest rate that now looks low. Prepayment rate measures. Market participants measure the prepayment rate using two measures. One is the single monthly mortality rate, SMM, and two is its corresponding annualized rate, namely the conditional prepayment rate, CPR. Weighted average life. For mortgage-backed securities, a measure widely used by market participants to assess is the weighted average life or simply the average life of the mortgage-backed security. Market participants use the Public Securities Association, PSA, prepayment benchmark to describe prepayment rates. A PSA assumption greater than 100 means that prepayments are assumed to occur faster than the benchmark, whereas a PSA assumption lower than 100 PSA means that prepayments are assumed to occur at slower than the benchmark. A quick practice question to check our understanding. A prepayment rate of 80 PSA means that investors can expect A, 80% of the par value of mortgage pass through security to be repaid prior to the security's maturity, 80% of the borrowers whose mortgages are included in the collateral backing the mortgage pass through security to prepay their mortgages, or C, the prepayment rate of the mortgages included in the collateral backing the mortgage pass-through security to be 80% of the monthly prepayment rates forecasted by the PSA model. Okay, this was a good question. C is correct. A prepayment rate of 80 PSA means that the investors can expect the prepayment rate of the mortgages included in the collateral backing the mortgage pass-through security to be 80% of the monthly prepayment rates forecasted by the PSA model. For example, if the PSA model forecasts an increase in prepayment rates of 0.2% for the first 30 months until they peak at 6% in month 30, 80 PSA would assume an increase in prepayment rates of 0.16%, the 80% times 0.2%, for the first 30 months until they peak at 4.8%, which is 80% times 6% in month 30. The important point here is to note is that thus, investors can expect slower prepayments than the PSA prepayment benchmark. If it's a less than 100, it's gonna be slower prepayments than the benchmark. Another quick practice question. The spread between yields on a Gini May pass-through security and a comparable treasury security is best explained by A, credit risk, B, prepayment risk, or C, reinvestment risk. It's a nice little question. The correct answer is B, mortgage-backed securities expose an investor to prepayment risk Therefore, the spread between the yields on a Gini May pass-through security and a comparable treasury security is best explained by B, prepayment risk. Another quick practice question. In, in a securitization, time tranching provides investors with the ability to choose between A, extension and contraction risks, B, senior and subordinated bond classes, or C, fully amortizing and partially amortizing loans. Okay, the correct answer is A. Time tranching provides investors with the ability to choose between extension and contraction risks. The tranching is the process in which a set of bond classes or tranches is created that allow investors a choice in the type of prepayment risk, extension or contraction that they prefer to bear. Senior and subordinated bond classes are used in credit tranching. Credit tranching structures allow investors to choose the amount of credit risk that they prefer to bear. Fully and partially amortizing loans are two types of amortizing loans. Quick question with regards to collateralized mortgage obligation. 
A collateralized mortgage obligation A eliminates prepayment risk, B is created from a pool of conforming loans, or C redistributes various forms of prepayment risk among different bond classes. Okay, we looked at CMOs in the previous LOS, but now this LOS is with regards to prepayments and prepayment risk. So this question fits in nicely as a continuation. C is correct. CMOs are created by redistributing the cash flows of mortgage-related products, including mortgage pass-through securities, to different bond classes or tranches on the set of prepayment rules. So a collateralized mortgage obligation redistributes various forms of prepayment risk among different bond classes. Another quick practice question. The tranche of a collateralized mortgage obligation that is most suitable for an investor who expects a fall in interest rates is A, a fixed rate tranche, B, an inverse floating rate tranche, or C, a packed tranche. B is correct. The tranche of a CMO that is most suitable for an investor who expects a fall in interest rates is an inverse floating rate tranche. The inverse floater pays a coupon rate that is inversely related to prevailing interest rates. Thus, if interest rates fall, the CMO's coupons rate will rise. For a collateralized mortgage obligation, CMO, the first tranche of bonds most likely has the A, highest level of prepayment risk and interest rate risk, B, lowest level of prepayment risk and highest level of interest rate risk, or C, highest level of prepayment risk and lowest level of interest rate risk. C is correct. The first tranche of bonds in a CMO receives all monthly principal first until it is paid off. Thus, it has the shortest duration of all remaining tranches and therefore the lowest interest rate risk. The first tranche also absorbs all prepayments and therefore has the highest prepayment risk compared with the remaining tranches. So nice question there with regards to prepayment risk and interest rate risk. Another quick practice question. The primary motivation for creating a collateralized mortgage obligation, CMO, is best described as the desire to redistribute which risk of investment in residential mortgages? A, default risk, B, liquidity risk, or C, prepayment risk? I think that one was fairly easy because the theme of this learning outcome statement is prepayment and prepayment risk. So C is correct because the motivation for creating a CMO is to distribute prepayment risk among different classes of bonds. And one last practice question to finish this learning outcome statement. A fixed income portfolio manager is evaluating investments in the mortgage market, but is concerned about prepayment risk. The security that will most likely minimize prepayment risk is A, a mortgage pass-through security, B, a portfolio of interest-only mortgage loans, or C, tranche B of a collateralized mortgage obligation. It's a nice question to end on. The correct answer is C, a collateralized mortgage obligation or CMO is structured to distribute prepayment risk among different classes or tranches of bonds. Tranche A would be repaid first, followed by tranche B, then C, etc. And that's the last slide for this LOS. Thank you.